Good morning and welcome to St. Agnes Catholic Church. Today we celebrate the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our readings can be found in the back of the hymnal, number 1158. Our entrance hymn is number 832, We Come with Joy in Christ Jesus, number 832. <laughs> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. A man from Baal Shalisha bringing to Elijah the man of God. 20 barley hollows made from the first fruits and fresh grain in the year. Elijah said, give it to the people to eat. But his servant objected, how can I set this before a hundred people? Elijah insisted, give it to the people to eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and there shall be some left over. And when they had eaten, there was some left over, as the Lord had said. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And hold. 
holy in all his deeds. The Lord is close to all who call him, who call on him in truth. The from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sea. Jesus went up the mountain and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him, because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred days' wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good? Are these for so many? Jesus said, Have the people reclined. Now there was a great deal of crowds in that grass in that place. So the men reclined, about five thousand in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to his disciples, gather the fragments left over, so that nothing 
will be wasted. So they collected them and filled 12 wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. Beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, today's readings mark the beginning of the discourse on the Eucharist, or Jesus' teaching about the bread of life, which we are going to encounter in the Gospel readings for the upcoming Sundays, for a couple of Sundays we shall have those readings. And in the first reading, we hear about the multiplication of loaves, 20 loaves. The Gospel reading also presents to us the multiplication of five loaves and two fish. This is a great miracle. It is so important that these readings, which talk about the Eucharist, starting today, comes just a week after we came to the close or the conclusion of the Eucharistic con Congress that we had in Indianapolis. Although the, the readings of today are centered on the Eucharist, I would not like to talk about the Eucharist, but I would like us to reflect on something very important. One important figure that was present at the performance of the miracle in today's gospel. This figure, through his contribution, became indispensable for that miracle to have taken place. And this is the little boy. There is a small boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. This is Andrew's answer to Jesus Christ. Where was this boy from? Or where does he come from originally? Maybe this boy came along with the crowd. Or was the boy originally from that mountain? Was that his village? However, if this boy originated from the crowd, we will begin to question, how comes they had 5,000 people they, among the 5,000 people, surely there would have been women with children, with babies. There would have been men, old men, and there would have been young people among those 5,000 people. But imagine when Jesus started thinking on where to have food to feed the crowd, only this little boy had five loaves and two fish. What would those women who were moving with babies have been thinking that they have children but they did not carry food along to feed the children? This little boy got what he was to eat along, but it rather became unfortunate that he could not eat it but give it up. Think about this, maybe why on the way they have been following Jesus all through and after, now they are making a journey up the mountain. But what would have happened? Maybe the bag became heavy for this little boy to carry, and he asked his friends or maybe someone to help with the bag. And imagine the person saying, I did not ask you to carry food. The journey is just so long, so I won't help you. Imagine some of his friends calling him, you foodie. You love food a lot. That is why you are taking food along. But this is the food that came to help the, family, the entire population. Come to think of it, was this small boy an angel sent by God? The name of the boy is not given in the reading. The readings does not even tell us if this boy was one among those from the crowd 
or he was originally from that mountain. All we knew and all we know is that there is a small boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. Think about Abraham and his son Isaac. When he was going to offer Isaac for sacrifice, the son turned to his father and said, Father, I can see the wood, I can see the knife, but where is the ram? And Abraham's answer was, the Lord will provide. Where is the lamb? And the answer was, the Lord will provide. In the gospel, Jesus asked Philip, where can we find enough food to feed the crowd? Where can we get food for these people? He knew, of course, what he was going to do. And the gospel tells us Jesus knew what he was going to do. But the question is, was Jesus aware of this boy with five loaves and two fish in the crowd? Could it be said that this boy is the image of God the Father who provided just at the point that his son was about to offer sacrifice for the people? The five loaves and two fish which we hear in the gospel today, as I said, is a foundation for the upcoming readings. These five loaves and two fish prefigure the sacrifice, the gift of his body and blood that Jesus was to give to the apostles on the Last Supper. And it also prefigured his offering on the cross where he gave his body and blood for the salvation of humanity. For this boy to have had that will, for him to have been able to offer what he had for the good of the crowd shows a high level of Christian charity. It is a symbol of one who lives for his people, a sign of selfless love. The vocation of this little boy is to be charitable. St. Paul reminds us to lead a life worthy of our calling. In the second reading, we hear him says, let us be able to be charitable to one another. Let us bear with one another's burden in complete selflessness, gentleness, and patience. Such is the attitude of this little boy in the gospel. He did not think about himself. He did not even hide to eat his food. Maybe he thought about eating the food, but he saw the crowd and he was like, how will I be eating while there are hungry people around me? And so he kept the food, which at last he offered to Christ without asking for any ransom. From this boy, we learned that true charity is not measured by what we offer, but it is measured based on the heart of the one who offers what he offers. There is always an act of the will that comes from man. And after that, there is a symbol of response, the response of gratitude that comes from God. This boy will to give all he had, the little he had. But the Lord Jesus Christ took it with gratitude and showed that gratitude by giving food to everyone to their satisfaction. It is clear that this boy who gave his food to the people did not have something in return as money. Could we imagine what was his own pay? The 200 days wages which Philip talked about was not even given to the boy for the five loaves and two fish. Although the Lord Jesus knew exactly what he was going to do, he did not refuse the offering of this little boy. He rather used it for the well-being of the entire crowd. Why the Lord Jesus had the power to make bread out of nothing, he did not use that power to make bread out of nothing, but rather 
he took the only five loaves and two fish that this little boy had in order to feed the crowd. When we lift up what we have for the good of the community, the Lord Jesus in turn will bless not only the one who is giving, but he will bless the entire community, including the one who is giving. Certainly, this boy ate from the mot multiplication of the loaves. He ate from the food that was multiplied as his own ransom. But however, he had a reward that was greater than just eating from these loaves that he gave. And that reward we hear in the Beatitude, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Should we say this boy actually saw God because of his purity of heart and mind? This boy, because of his purity of heart and mind, certainly saw God and is happy with him. Where can we have bread to feed the crowd? Of course, many people have said this little boy is a patron saint of those who are able to give willfully from the little they have. Even when they lack, they still give. This is their patron saint. But when we ask today, where can we find enough food to, eat, to give the people to eat, we think about our own community where people are suffering. There are people who are hungry spiritually. There are people who are hungry physically. There are people who are hungry emotionally. There are people who are hungry even mentally. Think about those lying in hospitals. Last weekend, I was at Cherrydale and at sunrise. There are people there that have been there for years, and there are others that have been there for months. They are sick and they are hungry. But Christ is asking, where can we have enough food for them to eat? We might not be like this little boy with five loaves and two fish to give. But we can do something that can change not a family, not an individual, but something that will go and give satisfaction to an entire community, to a whole nation. When I look at the doors of the church, I see the poor box standing there. Just one dollar in that box will go to change a whole nation somewhere. It might be your own children you don't know and you never know. That is the way we can feed the people today. We can also think about offering one Hail Mary even to the sick. If we do that, the blessing does not only come to the sick maybe by giving them quick recovery, but also the graces that comes to them will also come to us. This little boy was able to receive his own graces, even though he gave the good for the good of the community. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we might be Jesus today to ask, where can we find enough food to give these people? We might be Philip to say 200 days' wages will not be enough, which means we might be thinking that our own salary will not be enough to feed the world out of its starvation and hunger or the poor. But however, even if this salary is not going to feed them, there is a little that we can give that will feed them. And so we can also be Andrew who will say, there is a little boy here with five loaves and two fish. We know people that can be of help. We can go to them and say, there is somebody who is hungry. Please, could you help this person? Dear brothers and sisters, there is a small boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. Take that and give Jesus and the Lord, who is God of the harvest, will multiply it for the benefit of the whole community. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, you said that where two or more are gathered in your name, that you would be in their midst and hear their prayers. With this confidence, we offer these petitions. For all of our church leaders, especially Pope Francis, Bishop Babbage, and our parish priests, that they will preach the gospel with courage and conviction. We pray to the Lord. For our nation, that together we will promote the common good of all, safeguard the sanctity of marriage and the family, and defend the right to life and to religious freedom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice and peace among nations, especially Ukraine and the Middle East, and for those who serve in our law enforcement, military, diplomatic, and intelligence services to make peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians who face persecution and genocide, especially in communist and Islamic countries, that the Holy Spirit will keep them strong in the faith. And for all non-believers, that the Holy Spirit will move them to faith in our divine Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Israeli hostages and all the innocent victims of war, terrorism, and violence, we pray to the Lord. For the end of the drought and the blessing of rain, we pray to the Lord. For the acceptance of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that young men and women from our own families will heed Christ's call and offer their lives to him who gave his life for us. And for our parish seminarians, Gabriel Gode, Michael Gibbons, John Anthony Bono, and Andrew Garcia, for Sister Monica Baptiste Whelan, and Sister Abigail Therese Jones, who will be professing their first vows on August 10th as Dom Dominican sisters in Nashville, and for Joanna Shaw, postulant for the Carmelites in Port Tobacco, Maryland. We pray to the Lord. For the sick and homebound, especially Father Pinozotto, Alice Paston, and John Towey, and for our deceased, we pray to the Lord. For Martha Breno, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. For our own personal intentions, which we offer in the quiet of our hearts, We pray to the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear all our prayers, even those prayers held within our hearts. 
and to grant them in accord with thy divine will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In calling upon the prayers of our Blessed Mother, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 830, Lord Christ, the people flock to you, number 830. <laughs> Brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your name. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let, them the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and us. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory without 
as without end we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Agnes and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever, amen. amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Amen.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
just a few announcements. Our poor box collection this weekend is for Agape, an organization that helps moms in need have their babies. On Friday, we will have our Latin Mass offered at 7 p.m. Registration for religious education is now open. Please see the bulletin or the website for details. If anyone is interested in teaching or serving as a classroom aide, please contact Lisa Arosa at the parish. We will be having a special catechist certification program here beginning on September 6th. Again, please see the bulletin for that information. It is the official diocesan catechist certification. Lastly, first of all, we're, good, we're happy to have John Anthony Buono with us. He is our parish seminarian. He's been away all summer at this special program called Institute for Pastoral Formation that we have forced our seminarians to go to somewhere in Omaha. But anyway, we're happy to have him back. And he'll be leaving for vacation, so we won't see much of him because then he'll go back to seminary. The other point is we have his brother, Nick. And Nick is officially going off to college. So we thank Nick for his service to the parish as a faithful server and let us pray for him as he goes off to the University of Dallas. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the root of souls. Amen. Our recessional hymn is number 637. Now thank we all our God, number 637. Thank you. 